XYHT Magazine is honored to have Ken Jennings here to answer a couple of questions. You know Ken Jennings, uh, you know, of Jeopardy fame and his books, but our uh, interest is in Ken's affinity for geography. Uh, he's the author of a, a great book called Maphead that is really an enjoyable read. Yeah, I think it's funny how the received wisdom is just that Americans are, are worse at geography than they've ever been. But people have been saying that for, uh, you know, for decades. You know, I found studies back to the 40s and 50s with professors of geography bemoaning you know, their students not knowing where the Appalachians were or whatever. So this is not new. Um, and the fact that the world is so much smaller today, you, know, you turn on the TV and you're in Thailand or Syria or Venezuela or whatever, um, I feel like people do have to know this stuff now. And, and I think they do. You know, these, um, I think we're looking at maps more than we have in decades. Um, you know, our wayfinding is going out the window. You know, we're, we're driving and biking and walking with GPS, so we don't use dead reckoning, we don't think about where we are. So our actual spatial sense, I think there's good evidence that we're actually getting dumber. But as far as just looking at maps and knowing where places in the world are, like we may be at some all-time peak. Like I, you know, I use maps as a platform all the time now, you know. Oh, we're, you know, the pizza guy's late. Let's see if I can, you know, look at the app and see where he is. You know, we, we use maps to solve all, all kinds of problems now that were not mapping problems 10 years ago. Um, and people even do it for fun. You know, I've noticed this new trend of people sending around maps as memes, like uh, here's a fun map of the U.S. where uh, with every state's favorite dessert, you know, listed, or uh, here's a map of the world with everybody's favorite sport. Did you know the Philippines are really into basketball, you know? Um, or, you know, these amazing real-time weather maps. You know, maps actually get sent around as sort of, you know, fun office uh, jokes. And uh, I think this could be a golden age for, for that kind of geographic awareness. I think so. I, I became convinced of this when I was talking to some of the, the uh, digital mapping guys at Google Earth and Google Maps. Because they really see what they do as a mission, like a, they sort of have this weirdly ideological way to frame it, where, uh, where you know, they think that the spread of geographical knowledge is this absolute good, you know, that uh, it's going to be great for, uh, you know, for Americans to look at uh, digital imagery of, of, you know, Tehran and see that it's this bustling, western-looking metropolis, you know, and it's not, it's not camels and bazaars, you know, or, or you know, if, uh, if the people in North Korea could see the truth about the West, you know, that would, that would em empower them, you know, in, in, in that regime. Um, so there's this idea that, you know, the more you know about the rest of the world, um, you know, the, the, the main thing keeping us apart is ignorance. Uh, and, uh, you know, sometimes cynically I think, no, no, if, you know, if we, the more we knew about each other, then we'd, then we'd just, you know, be more annoyed by each other. But uh, the, the Google guys were very convincing. Yeah, I think we've seen just a fundamental change in maps in the last 10 years, which is really interesting to me because, you know, maps have not really changed much for centuries. You know, uh, the maps we looked at as kids were, you know, they'd be recognizable to, to Columbus, you know, the, the blue lines are rivers, the dots are, are cities and towns, you know, maps have been the same for 500 years. And now, you know, a map's not a, just a sheet of paper anymore, now it's a window where you can you can zoom in, you can move it around, you can make weather and traffic move it across it in real time. If you have the right app, you can see where your friends are getting a drink after work. It's, uh, you know, it's like the magical map from Harry Potter. You know, 10 years ago, this is a device in a children's fantasy book, and now, now it, we all have this app in our pockets, which is crazy to me. And I think that's going to change the way we think about maps. For one thing, it's, it's very good for, it's good PR for maps, you know? Like, maps don't seem stodgy anymore. Uh, you know, dusty thing that you third grade teacher pulling down in front of a blackboard. You know, that's what people may picture when they think about maps. They like their maps to be old timey. Suddenly maps seem very space age and cool. People are constantly surprised by sort of, you know, the, the very efficient and, uh, and the sort of sexy things they can do, you know. Um, so I think people are going to uh, think about maps in a new way now, which is, which is going to be huge. It's also interesting to me that 2D maps are not dying, though. Um, you know, encyclopedia sales cratered within, you know, a few years of the advent of the CD-ROM encyclopedia. You know, Britannica was essentially bankrupt just within a few years. And Atlas sales have not cratered. You know, people like looking at a big paper pa panorama. That's, 
that seems to be the right solution sometimes, you know, not just a little porthole on your phone. Um, and I'm the same way, you know, sometimes I, I, you know, you need the big picture of South America. You know, I, I could just hit Google or look at my phone, but instead I, I reach for the Atlas on the shelf. It just seems to be the right solution still, and I don't see that changing. Yeah, I do, it's interesting. I do feel like lay people now think they have the last word in their pockets. They know exactly where they are, and they don't really know about the level of imprecision. You know, I was, uh, uh, you know, I've seen people, you know, geocaching or just using their GPS for something like that, and you know, trying to figure out the exact square inch where they need to stand to zero stuff out. You know, and of course, the imprecision of their device is way beyond you know what they're trying to accomplish with it. But uh, but people do think that. But you know, on the plus side, you know, people are. are just interested in that location and uh, for almost all just everyday kind of stuff they're right you know, you know just finding this cafe today I could tell I, you know, not, not just what intersection it was but, uh, but that I had to be on this particular corner um, you know not in, in the non-professional realm you know 990 times out of a thousand you have more detail than you need now which is cool that's what got me into maps the detail you know just more about the world than a page of an encyclopedia could ever tell you I was, in, uh, I was in some science museum with my kids, and uh, they, had, uh, they had some kind of map that worked in four dimensions. You could watch the, the prehistoric supercontinents split into the land masses we know today. So you would see Pangaea split into Gondwana land and Laurasia or whatever. And the stuff had been very cleverly done so that our current land masses would actually deform. You know, they'd use some sort of simple computer graphical deformations to make them really fit together nicely. So you really got this idea of, you know, puzzle pieces, which kids love. I remember looking at a map of seeing how Africa and South America might fit together on, you know, on the wall of my second grade classroom. And, uh, you know, your imagination just sort of, sort of runs wild, you know. You, that's the way to get kids into plate tectonics or whatever. And, uh, and just watching this actually work in real, in, not in real time, we didn't have that long an afternoon, but. But watching it work in, uh, you know, continuous, you know, you could slide the slider back and forth, and the continents would sort of bend, and uh, you know, Greenland would get closer to whatever, um, India would come north. Um, just super excited. My kids loved it. My kids played with it for I don't know, 20 minutes. I feel like if anything, Jeopardy overemphasizes geography, just because there's just amazing wealth of names, proper names that people know, you know, they, I'm sure there's, you know, tens of thousands of proper geographical names that Jeopardy can ask about, which is not really true of, you know, anything else, historical figures or, uh, you know, modern celebrities or, uh, so it's easy to ask about. So there's lots of geography on Jeopardy, which is great for me. That's my bread and butter. Well,